Hello, world. I'm Anna. It was my first day of middle school when the teacher asked me to say a few words about myself in front of the class. But the local mean girl began to roast me because of my accent right away. Is that even English? What planet are you from, girl? You see, my parents and I had just immigrated to the USA from Moldova. I was super shy, and my English was far from perfect. Only one person stood up for me. Leave her alone, Betty. Your French is much worse. And this is how I met my future bestie, Erica. We stayed friends throughout middle and high school, and we were both fond of painting. But my parents didn't take my talent seriously, so I had to borrow art supplies from Erica or just use materials I had on hand. My parents insisted that I go to law school, so I took a gap year. And our initial plan was that I would work as an assistant at a law firm and prepare for college. Next stop, getting a master's degree and a fancy job with a six-digit salary, and eventually dying from boredom, I guess. But instead of the law firm, I got a job as a babysitter, and I spent all my money on art classes that I attended in secret, together with Erica, of course. We had a wonderful teacher who helped many students apply to the art school of my dreams. I planned to tell my parents something like, "Hey guys, the law school didn't accept me. Blah blah blah. That's too bad. But this art school wants to give me a grant." But so far, they didn't have a clue. That's why I had to hide all my paintings in Erica's garage. One day, I arrived at the art studio as usual and noticed a new face. It was Leo, the golden boy from my school. My heart skipped a beat. I had a crush on him when I was little, but he was too cool to notice me. What are you doing here? I'm only here because my parents told me I had to be. Well, obviously, because he didn't make any effort. Although, he had some natural talent.、Hmm. But anyway, that day our teacher amazed us with another surprise. One of the fanciest galleries in the city had announced a contest. Winners were to get an exhibition space and monetary prizes. Anna. You should definitely send in your work. Can I apply too? Well, yeah, anyone can try. We followed his advice and applied, but I didn't hope for anything. It had been a couple of weeks. I kept on babysitting and saving money, and then one day, the boy I was looking after broke his parents' piano and blamed it on me. They threatened to call the police if I didn't pay for the broken piano. Of course, I paid because I didn't want to involve my parents. So I ended up with no job and no savings. It was very sad because I couldn't afford the art studio anymore. I went there before class to say goodbye and pick up my instruments. The class was empty, and I couldn't help it and burst into tears. And suddenly, I heard his voice. Anna, why are you crying? What happened? I have to leave because I'm too poor to pay for these classes. Hmm. What if I told you I needed a private tutor? He handed me a napkin. What? Our rich bully had a heart. Yeah, right. Don't tell me you want to be an artist. Nope. I just want my trust fund back. Oh, I see. You see, Leo had made some questionable choices in the past, so now he needed to win back his parents' trust to regain access to the family money. So it was a win-win deal for us. We shook hands and began to meet for private lessons at the studio three times a week. And honestly. It felt like babysitting because Leo pulled silly pranks all the time. But I didn't complain. At the end of the day, he paid much more than my previous employer, and he was still my crush. But that was my big secret. After a while, I received an email from the art contest. I made it to the finals, and I was getting a prize of twenty thousand dollars plus money from the sale of my work. That's what I call main character vibes. I was over the moon and called Erica right away, but unfortunately, she didn't win anything. So that day was kind of bittersweet for us. Meanwhile, my classes with Leo carried on. One day, Leo offered to draw my portrait, and gosh, we had such intense eye contact. It's ready. Can I see it? But there was no portrait. He just wrote pure beauty. It was so cute and romantic. I don't know what came over me. But I kissed him. He hugged me tight and stroked my hair very gently. I've always dreamed of hooking up with a teacher. <laughs> Shut up. Sorry, I'm super nervous because I really like you. Leo walked me home that night, and we agreed to go on a real date the next week. But first, 
I had to deal with exhibition planning. The next morning, I went to pick up my work from Erica's garage. I had to deliver them to the gallery, but they were gone. What the heck, Erica? Erica gaslighted me like a psycho. She claimed she didn't remember me leaving any paintings in her garage. I was shocked. Bruh, I don't have time for pranks. I need my paintings. Sorry, can't help ya. I think you should leave. You need to see a doctor, Erica. I decided to go home and think because I literally didn't know what to do. But when I got there, I faced another unpleasant surprise. Erica called my parents and spilled the tea on me. They knew everything about my secret life. Dad showed me a picture of me kissing Leo, caught in 4K. Seems like Erica had been spying on us that night. I'm so sorry I lied to you guys. You are so grounded. Go to your room. My first art exhibition was taking place in just two days, but my zero empathy parents refused to listen. Not only did they ground me, but they also took away my phone and my Wi-Fi. I spent the rest of the night in my room like a prisoner. Thankfully, Leo began to worry and came to my house, but my parents drove him away. He snuck around the house and knocked on my window. I explained the situation briefly and he asked me to run away with him. I quickly packed my bag and climbed out the window. Leo brought me to his mansion. He let me stay in the guest house for as long as I needed. Thank you so much, Leo. I have no idea what to do with Erica. No worries, I've got an idea. The next day, Leo and I went to Erica and offered her money for my paintings. Come on, Erica, name your price. Hmm, let me think. She wrote the sum on a piece of paper. $200,000, can you believe that? Okay, but first, I wanna see what I'm buying. Erica took us to the basement. I saw my paintings just sitting there. Thank goodness you didn't do anything to them. Suddenly, three masked men broke into the basement grabbed the paintings and ran away. Of course, Erica didn't expect that. She looked shook. Oops, looks like everyone wants Anna's art. I guess the deal is off. Goodbye, Erica. The robbers were fake. We asked the bodyguards of Leo's father to dress up and help us. And these guys really understood the assignment. Leo helped me bring the paintings to the gallery just in time. I continued to live with him and it felt amazing to be honest. I had enough time and freedom to prepare and send my application to the art school. Leo decided to follow in my footsteps and apply to the art history track. We decided to buy a new phone for me, and I texted my parents and invited them to my exhibition. And surprisingly, they showed up! What a twist! Mom, Dad, I'm sorry that I left, but I'm the only person who has to live my life day by day. So let me decide for myself, please. We know, honey. And we're sorry too. My folks liked my paintings when they saw that other people appreciated them. One art dealer offered $10,000 for one of my works. When my dad heard that, he choked. Gosh, can I become an artist too? From that day on, my relationship with my parents became more mature. As for Erica, ugh, she really freaks me out. So I'm just trying to stay <laughs> away from her. This little kid playing with sticks and stones in the backyard is me. My name is Roy. Dinner is ready. I'm coming. Yeah, my name is Roy, and this is a story about my life. My mother raised me alone, and as you can see, we weren't very rich. Old house, plain food. I'd even say we were very far from being rich, but I knew that mom was trying her best for us, so I never complained. Money wasn't as important to me as my mom's love. Although, not everyone agreed with me. There were two guys at school who never gave me a break. They were always teasing me. Mom told me to just ignore them. She said that they would regret it when we grow up. It didn't really comfort me, but I didn't want to get into a fight and upset her. So I just put up with it. One day, I saw them coming towards me and mentally prepared for anything. But then, hey, you two, stop bothering him already. Vincent Anderson, the most popular boy in school. His dad was the mayor of our city. That day, he stood up for me and protected me from these guys. They haven't bothered me since. I was grateful to him, but... Wow, Vincent, you're so brave. And so kind and handsome, too. <laughs> Thank you. Couldn't help but be jealous. He made these guys stop without lifting a finger. Everything was so easy for him. Also, he was surrounded by attention. And even though he was kind to me, 
I felt a huge gap between us. When I was 10, my mom got sick. She hid her condition for a long time because she didn't want to get fired, until it was too late. The treatment was too expensive, and of course, we didn't have that kind of money. Shortly before she died, she told me, <coughs> Roy, listen to me. I didn't want to do this, but now we have no choice. Take this letter and bring it to this address. I didn't know what was in that letter, but I promised to do as she asked. When mom passed away, I went to the address and arrived at a huge luxurious mansion. What the heck? Was this the right address? I've never seen such wealth in my life! But I promised my mom that I'd deliver the letter. So I tried to talk to the guards, but they didn't want to listen to me. They saw my poor clothes no. and were about to kick me out when... Wait! Vincent? Vincent Anderson? Hi! Roy, right? What are you doing here? I... 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 You, you, you! <laughs> Let him through, guys! This is my friend! Come in, dude! When I went into the house, I couldn't stop admiring the luxury of this place. All this expensive stuff, and everything was so clean. Suddenly, I felt so ashamed of my old rags. But Vincent didn't seem to care. I explained everything to him, and he just smiled and called his father. I was in the living room when he came down. Oh my god, David Anderson, the mayor of our city. I was terrified and couldn't even talk. So I just awkwardly handed him the letter instead. Mr. Anderson read it carefully and then suddenly burst into sobs and hugged me. I'm sorry, my little boy. His little boy? What? I didn't understand anything, but Mr. Anderson told me what had happened. It turns out that he and my mom once loved each other, but then they broke up. Mom didn't tell him she was pregnant with me and just left. He never heard from her again. The mayor later got married. Although now, he and Vincent's mother were divorced. He didn't even know about me. When I heard him out, I was shocked. This whole time, my mom was hiding my father from me? Even though he was the mayor? How could she do that to me? I don't understand. Why didn't she come to you when she was sick? You would have helped her. She could have survived. She was always very proud. Before she died, she probably came to her senses and decided to give you a good life. Welcome home, son. What's up, step bro? Home? Step bro? What? Everything happened so quickly. I didn't even have time to process all this news. Mr. Anderson, father, I mean, said that it would be better for everyone if we changed the story a little. So he told the press that he had adopted me, that I was an orphan from the streets. I wasn't sure why he did that, but he and Vincent were so kind to me that I was willing to do anything to stay here. And it was definitely worth it. My new life was amazing. New PC, and a phone, traveling, great food. I was blinded by all this luxury. Of course, all these changes were very sudden and scary. But I was fine, because Vincent was always there to support me. Speaking of Vincent, he turned out to be a very cool guy. We quickly became friends. When the school found out that I was now his brother, everyone immediately stopped laughing at me. Everyone became so respectful and regretted their actions. Ha! <laughs> and if someone dared to hurt me, Vincent always had my back. But I was still a quiet kid. Vincent has always been the coolest and most popular guy in school. Always the best grades, winning all the competitions, and so on. In other words, a golden child. I was a little jealous, of course, but I was still happy. As long as Vincent treated me like a real brother, everything was awesome. Many years have passed. I turned 18 and was thinking about going to college. One day, I was surfing the internet trying to find some info about my college. And then I stumbled upon a thread about my family. I usually tried not to get involved in all this. I've always wanted to live a quiet life. I didn't want some random strangers to be discussing me online. But at that moment, for some reason, I decided to click on this thread. And that little decision changed my life forever. What? This is nonsense! David is just using Roy to earn himself some saint points? I feel sorry for Roy, nobody cares about him? It's terrible to live in the shadow of your brother? I don't think he was actually adopted. I bet he's the son of David's mistress. Remember how he tried to cover that story? He didn't want it to ruin his reputation. 
What are they talking about? These people don't know anything about my family. How dare they discuss someone's private life like that? I turn off the computer and try to forget about it. However, as the days passed, my anger didn't subside. One of the comments stuck in my memory. Didn't want to ruin his reputation. What were they talking about? I couldn't stop thinking about it. And I finally decided to go to my father and ask him. So I went to his office. Dad, are you here? But he wasn't there. I wanted to leave, but I couldn't resist and decided to rummage through his stuff. I quickly ran through old documents, photos, articles, until I found it. What? Letters from my mother. Letters that hadn't even been opened. I read them all, my eyes filled with tears. The same words repeated over and over again. Please don't kick us out. This is your son. How can you do this? I'm sorry. And so many more. So it's true? My father... My mom died because of him. Vincent! Hmm? Roy? What's up? Did you... Did you see this? Where did you find this? Who, who cares? How could my father hide them from me? All right, man. Calm down. Let's not make a big deal out of this, okay? What do you mean, let's not make a big deal? Vincent, no! The letters were thrown into the fire before I could blink. I rushed to it, but it was already too late. I turned around in shock and froze when I saw Vincent's gaze. I had never seen him like this. He looked like a different person. You always like to poke your nose into other people's business, don't you? What? Can't you just be happy that we didn't leave you, a dirty little rat to die in the streets? You won't prove anything, so shut up and keep living your little invisible life. Get out! He kicked me out of his room. I couldn't believe it. This wasn't the Vincent I'd known all my life. So all these articles were right? My father and brother both just used me to earn a good reputation for themselves? And that's why David Anderson tried to hide the fact that I was his real son. All these years I spent hating my mom, thinking that she refused to live here simply out of pride. What an idiot I was. How could I believe that? I was so overwhelmed. The people I trusted, people I loved for so many years, turned out to be lying monsters. What am I supposed to do now? How can I keep living here? Yeah, that's right. I can't stay here. I have to leave. I want to forget everything that happened. I planned my runaway very carefully and made sure that they wouldn't be able to track me. And finally, that day came. I packed my stuff took some money, and ran away from home. I didn't care about the Andersons' reputation. I moved to another city. With the money I had, I rented a small apartment, and I was even lucky enough to find a job as a waiter. That's how my new journey began. I started living a quiet, calm life, like I'd always wanted to. In a new city, under a new name, from scratch. A few years later, my father died, but I didn't come to his funeral. I wanted to forget about the past, like it was a nightmare. Here, I was finally happy. I even managed to rise from waiter to manager. Everything was fine until one day, I checked out the news from my hometown. One of the candidates is young Vincent Anderson. Despite his age, he is already gaining votes. He also opened his own charity network. The purpose of this charity campaign is to help people. This, this is Vincent. Is he running for mayor and doing charity work? Ugh, there's no way he genuinely cares about all these people. No, it's none of my business. I shouldn't even care, but... You won't prove anything, so shut up and keep living your little invisible life. No, <laughs> I can't leave it like this, knowing his true nature. I can't let this man become mayor and ruin even more lives. I'm sorry, Mom, but you were wrong. You can't just tolerate the pain. You can't just sit there and hope that a person will change in the future. You have to stand up for yourself. A few days later, I went back to my hometown for the first time in many years. I saw our, no, their mansion again. Fortunately, the security system still remembered my fingerprints. I snuck into the mansion. As I thought, after father's death, Vincent took over his office. All his important documents should be here. Fortunately, he didn't change the password to the safe either. Let's see. Roy? Vincent. Roy! <laughs> oh, brother, I'm so glad to see you. Where have you disappeared to? Father and I... Stop it. You don't have to pretend. 
I know exactly who you are. I won't let you become mayor. Oh, I see. That look again. It gave me the creeps. It was like he was taking off his mask. And what is your plan, may I ask? My reputation is perfect. Or do you think some pathetic beggar like you will be able to destroy what I've been building for years? Your charity. I'm sure you're deceiving people. <laughs> so what? You'll never prove that. For those people, I'm a hero, a savior. And you? No one. Security, get him out of here. The guards threw me out of the house that was once mine. And Vincent thought he had won. But he didn't know that in reality, the victory was mine. Yes, there it is. I managed to find a hidden evidence. I found invoices showing that Vincent spent money from charity on cars and other stuff. He could have said I stole his stuff, but this is still my home, isn't it? Besides, I only took some papers. Moreover, I recorded our conversation. I prepared all this in case Vincent and I met. <laughs> I wanted to dance for joy. It really worked. And now his career is over. The next morning, Vincent was exposed in the news. The recording of his speech went viral, along with my exclusive interview and evidence of his lies. People were furious, and Vincent was arrested for fraud. No, you can't do this to me. My reputation. Ugh, let go of me. No. A man who had been playing the role of a good boy for so many years actually turned out to be a scumbag. Who would have thought? But I was glad that I finally defended myself for the first time in my life. I knew I'd done the right thing. I went back home and continued to live my happy little life. Hi, I'm Sherlock Holmes. Nah, <laughs> just kidding. My name's Veronica. My dad is the chief of police. No wonder I've always dreamed of fighting the bad guys just like him. However, he was too stubborn. No, Veronica, it's too dangerous. You need to find a safe job. Blah, blah, blah. But like father, like daughter, I was even more stubborn. He threw out my detective novels. I wrote them myself. He threw away my spy toys. I made new ones out of trash. As a final act of rebellion, I applied for the criminal law program in college. Dad was furious. But after some arguing, he just gave up and let me be. College wasn't easy, of course, but I got really lucky because I met Ash. It's funny because at first I didn't like him at all. The teacher's pet from a rich family? Ugh, give me a break. But one day he helped me with a difficult project and since then I've gotten to know him better. He turned out to be a really nice guy and also dreamed of making the world a better place. We started hanging out a lot and over time, we became a couple. Everything in my life was going perfect until one day when something strange happened. I was walking through the mall and heard a familiar voice. I turned around and saw Ash. It was unexpected, so I happily ran up to him. Ash, hi, what are you doing here? I thought you didn't like this mall. But he just looked at me, confused. Um, I'm sorry, do I know you? W what? I laughed because I thought he was joking at first, but he seemed very serious. Uh, all right, Ash, very funny, but seriously, what? You must have me mistaken for someone else. I need to go. Uh, hey, what are you? Uh, shut up! I looked at the screen of my phone that was ringing and froze. Ash? But he's right in front of me. I picked up the phone and actually heard Ash's voice. What's going on? The other Ash was about to leave, but I quickly blocked his way. Hold on a second. Ash, can you please turn the camera on? Um, okay. Ash turned on the camera and all of us froze in shock. My boyfriend and his identical copy were looking at each other. Is this some kind of stupid joke? No. Listen, let's all calm down and talk about this. A little later, all three of us met at the cafe. Now looking at them, I could see that they're two different people. For example, Ash had a small scar on his forehead, while the copy did not. I guess I'm still years away from Sherlock Holmes. But anyway, we began to discuss the situation. The copy guy's name was Winter. He grew up as an only child in a poor family. Recently, he started working downtown so he could save some money for college. 
The whole situation seemed very strange. They weren't just a couple of doppelgangers. They were like twins. Hold on. Ash, you told me you were adopted, right? Huh? Well, yes, but you don't think. The three of us exchanged glances. Winter, could you ask your parents if you ever had a brother? At first, Winter got mad. He said that his parents were good people and they would never separate him from his own twin brother. But we had no other ideas. So in the end, he agreed to ask them about it. While we were waiting for a call from Winter, I decided to look for any possible information. I found out which orphanage Ash was from. So we tried to ask the staff there. They told us that it wasn't the parents who brought him here, but the police. One day, they found a homeless kid. After trying to find his parents, they had no other choice but to leave him here. Suddenly, Winter called us and asked us to come to his house right now. Turns out, he told his parents about what happened and they confirmed it all. Ash and Winter really were twin brothers. We immediately drove to Winter's house. When we arrived, his parents met us at the doorstep. They looked at us in shock, as if they had just seen a ghost. And then Mrs. Moore threw herself into Ash's arms, sobbing. My boy, all these years, we're so glad you're okay. After a warm welcome, we went into the living room. Mr. and Mrs. Moore told us about what had happened. 13 years ago, they went camping in the woods. But then one of the twins, Ash, just disappeared. They searched everywhere and search parties wandered around for several days, but they never found anything. The search stopped after a week or so. That scar on your head. You must have fallen in the woods and lost your memory. You had to survive all alone. <sighs> My poor boy. She started crying again and the family hugged tightly. What was playing out in front of me was incredibly touching. But I couldn't get rid of this weird feeling in my gut. So I asked them, if the police found Ash later, why didn't they bring him home? They probably figured that he was just a homeless child. I caught myself grinding my teeth. Are the police that careless? Did they really not notice that Ash was the same missing boy from the camping trip? But as I watched the happy family reunion, I decided to put my doubts aside. As time went on, the two families became closer. And even though Ash and Winter grew up in different places, they really had a lot in common. Ash's parents helped Winter get into college and even helped his family financially. All of this seemed like a fairy tale. And yet, I couldn't get rid of this unpleasant gut feeling. I tried to tell the boys about it, but they seemed kinda annoyed. They told me that I've been reading too many detective novels and that I've become paranoid. Maybe they were right? No. Something doesn't add up here. I know it. A true detective has to trust their gut. In the end, I decided to try and dig up the truth. I went to the police station. This place was like a second home to me. My dad used to leave me here when there was no babysitter to look after me. The plan was simple. I had to get into the archive room. Surely there must be something about Ash in there. While everyone was busy, I quietly went up to the second floor and... Ah, dang it! Um... Hi, Daddy. I just wanted to, um, see what's on the agenda. You aren't allowed in here, Veronica. Ugh, seriously? Okay, Veronica, if you want to eventually be the law, now is the time to break it. Oh, I'm so sorry. Veronica! <sighs> you have to be more careful. While Dad was collecting papers, I quietly pulled the ID card out of his back pocket. And while profusely apologizing, I stealth my way to the archive room. All right, I don't have much time. I need to find records from 13 years ago. Good thing they've all been digitized. Let's see. Missing. No, not that. Oh, here it is. I've got to print this file and hurry before anyone notices me. Come on, come on. Yes, great. Whew. Fortunately, I managed to slip out of the archives and leave the police station as if nothing had happened. Dad will definitely find out, but that's okay. I've got to learn the truth, no matter the cost. At home, I was finally able to read the records. And to my great surprise, there was no information about Ash's disappearance anywhere. 
This is so strange. The police kept records of everything, but there was nothing about the incident in the forest. Unless, oh my lord. Of course, all of the pieces of the puzzle came together and my blood boiled with anger. I called Ash and asked him to pay a visit to Mr. and Mrs. Moore's house with me. Now, I had a plan. We met at the appointed time. Everyone was surprised by my sudden call, but even more, by my cold tone. Mr. and Mrs. Moore, you said that there was an active search after Ash's disappearance, but there's nothing about it in the police records. Um, that's strange. They probably lost it, or... Veronica! We asked you to stop your detective nonsense! I ignored that and kept pressing Mr. and Mrs. Moore with questions. I just needed to buy some time. But even now, these two were clearly becoming very nervous. Winter and Ash tried to calm me down, but I wasn't going to give up. The more questions I asked, the more confusing their answers became. I looked at my watch and grinned. Great. Time for the final blow. The truth is that you yourself abandoned your child in the forest. Am I wrong? At that moment, we all heard sirens from police cars outside. Mr. Moore started panting heavily and Mrs. Moore just blushed with anger. She ran towards me with a growl and grabbed me. Oh, you little, you can't prove anything, do you hear me? She swung at me, but at that moment, the police came into the house. They quickly handcuffed Mrs. Moore. We didn't have enough money for two children. Now we're finally rich and you ruin everything. Let me go, let me go. I explained the situation to the police. While they were dealing with it, I saw my dad. He looked very displeased. Veronica, what does this all mean? I tried to talk to him, but he wouldn't even listen. He kept interrupting and yelling at me, and I couldn't even talk because of the lump in my throat. But then, Veronica, sorry to interrupt you. I just wanted to apologize to you for not believing you. Yeah, you were right the whole time. Poor boy seemed much more upset than me. I hugged them and threw an evil look at my dad. He just sighed and said we'd talk later. Some time has passed and Mr. and Mrs. Moore were proving guilty. My father was angry at me at first, but then he relented and admitted that without me, they would have never caught these cruel people. He finally realized that I wouldn't give up my dream. And in that case, it's better if I conduct my investigations using more legal methods. Veronica, we're here. Fortunately, Winter and Ash were doing better. Ash's parents adopted Winter too. And now all three of us were finally happy. And that was the story of the first case I solved. I was returning home from college and was crossing the park when I heard a familiar voice, looked around, and saw my sister and my boyfriend who were clearly on a date. They were about to kiss. I couldn't believe my eyes. But let me explain a little. Mia, did you steal my lipstick again? This angry girl is me, Bella. And this little monster here is Mia, my sister, the bane of my existence. <laughs> she is actually not so little, just a year younger than me but much, much more annoying. See, she has just stolen my lipstick. Ugh. I knew it! Mom, Dad! Yeah, I'm calling for my parents like a crybaby, but it's pointless. They won't listen anyway. Our parents always believe her, not me. They think she's a little angel and forgive her for everything. You think the problem is stupid lipstick? No, I try to be perfect for my parents. Top student, no trouble making, blah, blah, blah. But they simply love my sister more, and I'm like the boring one. There's no point in even trying. They'll laugh it off, and I, once again, will be the evil older sister who got greedy over a lipstick. I'm sick of it. Ah, and you know what's worse? She is copying me. She has the same hairstyle, she steals my makeup and clothes, and looks like fake me. And all this is to infuriate me. Identity thief Mia. I asked her not to do it, but she just pretends she doesn't know what I'm talking about. So I'm not surprised this witch betrayed me. But Nolan? Look at him. Oh, he is so handsome. And he has always supported me when I told him about my troubles with my sister. I trusted him so much. And he was the only person who understood me. Of course, 
We were not official yet. He asked me to keep our relationship a secret while it was still fresh. But Mia knew we were dating. She saw us a couple of times. Ah, huh. now I'm beginning to understand why she tried to copy me. It was easier to make my boyfriend like her more. She always loved to take what doesn't belong to her, but this time, she's crossed the line. I felt a lump in my throat. I hid behind the bushes so they wouldn't notice me. Tears were streaming down my cheeks. I've never been so hurt in my entire life. No, I can't go on like this anymore. I have to do something. I've got to teach her a lesson so that she stops bothering me once and for all. I decided not to tell them that I know everything yet. I pretended to be as innocent as a lamb. It was incredibly hard. I saw her giggling while looking at her phone and noticed how often she started to go out in the evenings. She lied, saying that she was hanging out with friends. Yeah, sure. And these friends are called Nolan. I was thinking about how to get back at her. And then I came up with a brilliant idea. I had an advantage over her, my connections. I made a lot of new friends in college all sorts of cool people. And I knew that Mia had always dreamed of hanging out with them. That's it. This is going to be the perfect revenge. I'm invited to Roxy's birthday? That's right. Mia would never miss a chance to go to this party. Everyone will be there. It probably feels like a dream come true to her. I stole an empty invitation from Roxy and signed Mia's name there. She was so happy that I almost felt pity for her. But this thief was asking for it. Finally, the day of the party came. I looked perfect because today was my day. Never mind Roxy. I was chatting with friends when the doorbell rang. Roxy opened the door and there on the threshold was none other than my dear sister. Oh, that's embarrassing. Of course, she had taken my dress and done her hair like mine and basically looked like a knockoff version of me, but nothing could hide her needy expression. Literally no class, that little social climber. The others seemed to notice it too and started giggling. Mia awkwardly handed Roxy a gift and babbled some kind of congratulations. When I saw Roxy's face, I knew the show was about to start. Um, thanks, but who are you anyway? The guys in the crowd started whispering and giggling. Look, a party crasher. She looks anxious. Of course Mia heard them. Her face flushed. I g got an invitation. Um... I didn't invite you. I don't even know you. Terrified, she started looking for me in the crowd. Then our eyes met and she beamed with happiness. Oh, she thought I was gonna help her. Poor thing. I almost felt sorry for her. But now it's time for me to triumph. Mia, what are you doing here? It's too late, shouldn't you be at home sleeping? Laughter ran out in the crowd. The smile immediately disappeared from Mia's face. She looked confused. She tried to say something about the invitation, but I interrupted her and apologized to Roxy for my silly little sister. Then I leaned over to Mia and said softly, Ah, by the way, I know about you and Nolan. She looked horrified. I was gloating. I was sure that now she'd start to yell at me and stomp her feet like a child. But suddenly, tears rolled down her cheeks. She didn't say anything and just ran off somewhere. I was gloating. But a couple of minutes later, I got a nagging feeling of pity. Come on now, did I go too far? She knew it was coming. But then I remembered the shattered expression on her face. I sighed and decided to go find her. Mia, Mia. I was completely exhausted. I paused to rest and then heard <laughs> sobbing nearby. It was Mia, of course. She was sitting on a bench in an empty park, all alone. Suddenly, I felt so guilty. I sat down next to her. We were awkwardly silent for a while, and I decided to go first. I told her that I caught her with Nolan and how it hurt me, that I wanted to get revenge on her, but didn't expect her to be so upset. Then it was like a floodgates opened. I spoke about her copying my style, stealing my clothes, and generally trying to hijack my life. And stealing my boyfriend was like the cherry on top of the cake. Mia listened to me in silence and didn't say anything. And then, I'm sorry, I was just, you have everything. Perfect grades, perfect friends, the perfect boyfriend, and I... She started sobbing again. A chill ran down my spine. I didn't know Mia felt like this. I always thought that she had it easy, since she was the favorite child. Did she feel the same way about me? I never wondered how it was for her. She continued venting. She never really stood out in anything and wasn't popular. 
All these years of living in the shadow of my success. She must have felt so lonely. And, by the way, didn't you guys break up? What? Who told you that? She told me everything. It turned out that Nolan had lied and told her that we had broken up. At first I thought, why did he do something so stupid? I would have found out sooner or later anyway. Maybe, knowing that we have a bad relationship, he decided that Mia and I wouldn't discuss it? Oh, that little... <clears throat> I trusted him with stories about my family, and he used it against me. And at that moment, I realized who was the real villain of this story. We got back to the party. Everyone looked at Mia and me in surprise, but we didn't care. We were looking for Nolan in the crowd, and it didn't take long. He was chatting with some girl and didn't even notice us. I pulled him out. He didn't even have time to say anything. I went berserk. I told him everything I thought about him without holding back. About breaking my heart, about breaking my sister's heart. I was yelling like crazy for everyone to hear. He just stood there, blinking and not knowing how to react. People gathered around us, secretly filming the fresh drama. It would definitely make a nice Instagram story. And then, wait a minute. So that's why you told me not to talk about our dates? Yeah, and me too. You told me your parents don't approve of us. Wow, look at that. I definitely didn't expect this. Is he some kind of date maniac or what? Did he hope to keep it all a secret? I washed his face and didn't find it handsome anymore. <laughs> Just sleazy. A minute later, Nolan was surrounded by a group of disgruntled girls. He tried to stop them, but they didn't listen. So all he could do was run. Mia and I just laughed. We both felt so relieved. That day we swore to each other that from now on, we would always be honest about our feelings. It's gonna be a long road, but our relationship has definitely improved. After all, no matter how many times we fight, we are sisters after all. <laughs>